Hello and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to share how to get more out of the workload feature in Asana and some tips for using this feature. This is a feature that helps you to answer that question, who should I be assigning tasks to based on their workload? It's, it gives you more visibility on what your team is doing and, and how much everyone kind of has on their plate at the moment. Now, if you have any questions about Asana, please leave me a comment below this video and leave me a comment telling me what you'd like to learn about if there's a particular video you think I should make and have a look in the description below this video where I have details where you can learn about my consulting service if you need help setting up Asana, training your team, and I've got details of how you can save 10% on your Asana premium or business subscription. So let's get into it. So the first of all, the Asana workload feature is available to users on the business subscription. So it is on the highest tier of Asana's payment plan. And here we are, we're looking at the Asana workload. What this is showing us, as you can see, is our assignees on the left, these are the members of our team, and these graphs showing kind of how much each person is working on at a given time. Now the tasks that we're seeing here, these are the tasks that are um, displayed from the portfolio that we're looking at. So I'm going to uh, go to my, I'll go to my portfolios here. Again, this is a business feature. And I have a portfolio here that I've created called clients. And this client portfolio, this is showing me some clients that I'm working on, SpaceX, Tesla, and Apple. I've got some great clients. Uh, and so you can see these three projects correspond to these three projects on the sidebar. And this is, this is the portfolio that I've created. So any tasks within these projects, that's what we're seeing on this particular workload. So the workload is, an, is a tab up here. So if I click from projects to workload, that's how I get to see this page. And if I click on any assignee, I can expand this workload and I can see for the different projects within this portfolio what each person is doing. So we can see for me, for Paul, on the SpaceX project, I've got some orange tasks here, Tesla, these blue ones, and Apple, the green ones. And if I hover my mouse on the assignee, you can see these numbers correspond to how many tasks I have to work on on a given day. So if we look at the first number, number one there, that's saying I have one task to work on. Uh, then we have three because I've got this task which is in progress, a task due here, and another one that's just started. So that's why on the second day, I've got three tasks that are in progress. Now, something, well, let's, so let's actually, before I move on, Looking at this, you can see in how to interpret this graph, Paul here, there's a gap here where Paul has nothing to do. Actually, that's sort of at the end of a weekend, so that's probably okay. But you can kind of see these big gaps. There's a gap where John Smith has got nothing assigned. So that might be an opportunity. There might be uh, some work I could assign to John because he has a kind of a gap in his week. So that's kind of how you can start to interpret these graphs. Now, you need to be, I think what people need to be careful of is how they're using due dates in Asana. I think to take advantage of this workload feature, you maybe need to rethink how you use due dates. Most people that use Asana, they really only use a singular due date to say this is a task that needs to be done by this day. So here's three tasks that I have, task A, task B, and C. One needs to be done by July 2nd, July 3rd, and July 5th. Now, this may not be telling a complete picture because these three tasks may be things that I'm working on simultaneously, but according to this, I'm not. So if, for example, I was starting this one on the Monday, I could drag that out. Let me start this one on the Tuesday and let me start that one on the Tuesday as well. So you can see this graph now is showing a slightly different feature. Because I've added start dates up here to the task, it's now actually showing a more accurate representation of what I'm working on on a given day. So I think to really make sure that this workload is displaying an accurate portrayal of your teams, what they have assigned to them at the moment, you probably need to be taking advantage of those start dates, which a lot of people don't do. Now, if I decide that you know what, Paul's got too much on his plate this day. I can, of course, I can click and drag and I can move this task up to John Smith and I can put that on his name. It's now gonna be assigned to John and I've, I've completely updated the task. And that's updated everywhere that where you can see this task in the project uh, and John will be notified that the task has been reassigned. So just, you can drag things around to really make sure everyone's got a healthy workload at any given time. So if we look down here and we decide John's got a bit of a spike up here. He's got four tasks to do. Maybe we'll be nice and we'll we'll bump. We'll say you know do that one earlier in the week, and we can bump something else to later. And we can kind of just spread out the work <clears throat> a little bit more. And of course, you could reassign. You know, 
John's got quite a lot of work to do here. Paul doesn't really have much to do. So maybe this one will move down to Paul and that way we're kind of spreading the work more evenly. Keep in mind as well that this workload is not showing tasks that have not been assigned. So if I actually go into one of these projects where I can see some tasks, let's look at uh, Tesla. You know, if, if one of these tasks isn't assigned, for example, obviously that's not gonna show on anyone's workload. So again, you really wanna adopt some best practices when assigning your tasks and adding those dates. A lot of teams will basically have an internal rule that every task they create has to be assigned and has to have a due date. Something else worth keeping in mind with this is that currently, I mean, this is still a fairly new feature at the time of recording this, and so I'm sure it's going to get a lot better with time, but um, what this doesn't really tell us right now is the size of the task or how long it's gonna take. It's sort of assuming that all tasks are created equal. So you might wanna give some thought to how do you differentiate a task that takes five minutes. This, you know, this one here, it's due on the 11th. This might take five minutes, whereas Paul, who also has a task on the 11th, that might take five hours. They're both due on the same day. They can both be accomplished within a day, but they might take uh, drastically, you know, different amounts of time. So currently with the with the current workload feature, it doesn't show us that. Uh, but again, my thought is that this will obviously get better with time. Um, but right now you want to give some thought to how you would manage that. Maybe using a custom field, for example, to illustrate this is how many hours we expect the task to take. Or you might use a tag or something to say this is a task that's going to take, you know, um, half a day or you know use a tag to illustrate the length or duration of the task so something worth giving some thought to because yeah as I said not all tasks are created equal so there we are that is a bit of a look at the workload feature I'm really impressed with this feature I think it's a great way to see you know what's your team working on and just make smarter decisions about how you allocate work between people making sure that everyone is um, has a, a decent workload. Nobody uh, doesn't have anything to do and people aren't overloaded as well. You can really shift things around. It's, it's really nice and visual and makes allocating and spreading out work really nice and simple. So as I said, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.